Hello. Welcome to the Nightly Bedtime Story Podcast. I'm Kevin Hayes, the Story Man, and tonight's bedtime story is The Strange Tale of the Brown Bear, written by Loretta Ellen Brady. I hope you like it. The Strange Tale of the Brown Bear, written by Loretta Ellen Brady. Long, long ago, in the very far north, there lived a mammoth brown bear. Never in all the world was seen such a gigantic creature. Brown Bear was so tall, his eyes looked over tops of trees, and his footprints were so deep that a grown man could stand full height in them. They were great pits. Now Brown Bear owned a gold mine so rich that the king envied it. Also Brown Bear loved gold exceedingly, but as he had no hands, he could not dig for it. Therefore, he lay in wait for travelers journeying through the forest, and seizing them, he would carry them off to be his slaves and dig his gold. All folks suffered from this cruel custom, the rich and poor, the high and low, the young and old. The king of that land offered rich rewards to the hunter who would slay this monster, or to the trapper who would snare him. But no arrow was made strong enough to pierce the hide of Brown Bear, and no trap could hold him. So he continued to carry off all captured folk to his gold mine underneath the mountainside. Twas said that Brown Bear had as many slaves as there were subjects left in the kingdom. Twas also said the walls of Brown Bear's cave were lined so thick with gold that they outshone the sun. It happened one evening that a poor peasant returning to his hut missed his little child. His wife had lately died, and there was no one at home to tend the little one. He asked the neighbors of the child and learned that it had last been seen running toward the forest. In deep anxiety, the peasant hurried to the forest, but though he searched all night and called, he could not find his little one. When morning came at last and it was light, he saw the child's bright scarlet cloak beneath a tree and not far off the mighty footprints of Brown Bear. Alas, the peasant wept. My little one is carried off by this great monster. I do not wish to live. He seized the little scarlet cloak, and weeping and lamenting, pressed it to his heart. Then, when he could weep no more, he rose and began to follow in the path of Brown Bear's footprints. I'll seek this Brown Bear in his cave, thought he, and if he make a slave of me, I shall at least be with my little one, and if he kill me, I care not. For many hours then the peasant toiled through brush and bramble, and when night came, from weariness, he stumbled and fell headlong into one of the mighty footprints of Brown Bear. He broke no bones, but for a long time he knew nothing. When he awoke at last, he found beside him a tiny baby bear that wept and shivered with the cold. "'You, little one, are not yet wicked,' said the peasant, "'and though your race has done me injury, still, if I warm and comfort you, so may some good soul warm and comfort my own little one, whom I have lost. He wrapped the baby bear all in the scarlet cloak and fed it bread. Then, when it slept, he took it in his arms and climbed out of the pit and set upon his way once more. He had not gone far when he reached a cave all lined with gold, and this he knew to be the home of Brown Bear. Caring nothing for his life, the peasant boldly entered. When he was within, he saw the wife of Brown Bear weeping bitterly. "'Why come you here, O peasant?' cried the wife of Brown Bear. "'Do you not know that my husband makes slaves of all men? Hasten away before he returns, lest he do you greater harm than even that.' "'I care not if Brown Bear makes a slave of me,' the peasant answered. "'Where is thy husband now, and why do you weep?' "'My husband, Brown Bear, is out seeking in the forest to find our little one.' who wandered off, and who, alas, I fear, is dead. Therefore I do weep, she answered sobbingly. And lest you know it not, O peasant, let me tell you this. The loss of children is the greatest grief that ever parents suffer. Indeed, I know too well what grief is that, the peasant cried, and bursting into tears, he told the tale of his own woes. Now as he told, The wife of Brown Bear fixed her great eyes on the bundle wrapped in scarlet that he carried. "'What have you there, O peasant?' she asked eagerly. "'A tiny baby bear I found,' 
when I fell headlong into one of Brown Bear's footprints, he replied. The little one did weep from cold and hunger, and so I fed and warmed him, and as I could not find it in my heart to let him die, I took him from the pit with me. It is my little one! It is my little one! the wife of Brown Bear cried. She seized the baby bear and hugged and fondled it with joy. But for your kind heart, peasant, he must have died down in the pit. So wait you till my husband comes for your reward. She raised her great voice in a mighty roar, and presently Brown Bear came crashing through the trees. He seized the baby bear and hugged it as his wife had done, and when he heard the story, thanked the peasant warmly. Now, for this service you have rendered me, I'll give you all my gold, O peasant, cried Brown Bear. For though I do love gold beyond compare, I love my little one far more. And just as dearly do I love my little one whom you did steal, O brown bear, the peasant cried. And likewise do all parents love their little ones. Therefore, if you will free all those you hold as slaves, ten thousand homes will be made happy as this home of yours tonight. I ask this boon, and you may keep your gold which you do love so dearly. But brown bear would not have it so. You shall have what you ask, and all my gold beside, said he. For while I mourn because my little one was lost, my gold brought me no gladness, but instead did mock me with its brightness. So saying, he flung open wide the door that led beneath the mountainside, and bade his slaves go free. With shouts of joy these folk ran to their homes, and all the forest rang with their rejoicing. The peasant found his little one, and held him to his heart. My little one, my little one, he cried. I wish no more reward than this, O brown bear. But you shall have more, even so, said brown bear, and gave to him the key of the gold mine. Now you are richer than the king himself, and indeed tis right that you should be, for what his thousand hunters with their poison barbs and cruel traps could never do, with your kind heart, you have accomplished, peasant. Go tell the king and all his subjects that they need fear me never more. Through mine own grief, I know the sorrows I have caused, and from henceforth I'll live in peace with man. The peasant thanked him, and with his little one departed for his home, and there a multitude of grateful folk were gathered to greet him. And from that day the peasant was no longer poor. As owner of the rich gold mine, he now became a man of wealth. The king respected him and made him noble because he had done noble service for the kingdom. His title was Duke Kindly Heart. In closing this strange tale, I too must say the brown bear kept his word and never more molested travelers journeying through the forest. Indeed, he grew so friendly with the king and court that he fought all their wars for them and brought them many victories. When Brown Bear died at last, as creatures all must do, the people wept for him, and all the kingdom put on mourning. I hope you liked tonight's bedtime story, The Strange Tale of the Brown Bear, written by Loretta Ellen Brady. I'm Kevin Hayes, the Story Man, and I'll be back tomorrow night on the Nightly Bedtime Story podcast to read you another bedtime story. But for tonight, good night.